Hello there interwebs, both Twitch and YouTube. So today we're going to be talking a little bit about the death penalty rules and one key feature here that is missing from what was proposed. But for the most part, this was implemented pretty much uh, as it was planned originally. And then we're going to be talking about the reputation system and NPC communication system that has never seen the light of day compared to what was proposed during the design document forums and what's actually been implemented over the course of the past, I'm going to say, three years at this point. The only thing with Death Penalty that really never made it into the game was Iron Man Elite Mode. Uh, this would have been able to basically create your creator or uh, commander and flag him as being Iron Man. And then Iron Man would basically be you'd have to fly in essentially open only. And you'd have to manually eject. You'd have an escape pod. And if you died before you could eject your escape pod or ran out of oxygen, then your commander would suffer permanent death and then you would be put back into, quote, normal or plebeian space uh, to continue on from that point if you so choose or chose to do so, or you'd have to create a new Iron Man commander at that point and start over again. This could have been interesting, but they scrapped it due to lack of time and resources with the impending uh, release of the game in December 2014. Again, wanting to make that 2014 deadline uh, in conjunction with the 30th anniversary of the Elite game release. So reputations. Now, this gets to be very interesting because there was some really poor decisions here that actually did make their way into the early parts of the game and was universally hated by the players. And for a couple of reasons. One of the big ones being uh, in the early parts of the game when it came to reputation, you didn't really know where you stood, or you would just give a, a little thing of text, and then like an arrow that would say that your your uh, reputation is increasing or decreasing. But a lot of times people were kind of wondering if things were actually working in the background sim, and working with the reputation system, and if things were actually working as intended, or if they were bugged. And we had no visual feedback. In fact, I probably did videos over this back in the day, uh, discussing these problems. But it even says here that, you know, reputation values were supposed to be hidden to the player, and they just experienced the effects on NPC behaviors, which is kind of interesting. They also talk a lot about an event system, and we'll talk a little bit more of that as we go through here. And the idea that if you're hostile, you know, you get bad response. If you're neutral, neutral, good, friendly. And dialogue option availability, likelihood of success with very options. You know, if you're in bad reputation, fewer options available, less chance of options having a good result. Uh, if you're in good graces, more options applicable and a greater chance of having good results with your options. Uh, the, this was supposed to be designed into the game, was an interaction system with NPCs through dialogue menus. And with a couple of minor exceptions, that hasn't happened. And determining the threat level of a player near NPC archetypes, you know, proximity to NPCs, scanning the NPC, opening weapons near them, some of this kind of has been there, but for the most part, not really. Uh, we never really have seen a true implementation of these NPC archetypes in any real meaningful way, shape, or form. And they talk a lot about them in the previous video uh, when we were talking about the different type of AI activities and stuff like that. Thing, it seems like they had a lot more things that they wanted to do here that, has, that, that didn't make it into the initial release and hasn't been subsequently really worked on since uh, in many meaningful ways. I'm sure some people might disagree with me on that, that paid a little bit more attention to some of these things, but, uh, you know, the levels of interest and a few other things, like your ship appearance. And NPC had archetypes have taken into account your appearance and how well it's maintained. If your ship has a high appearance uh, from being well looked after, you know, they're going to look more favorably on it. And they give the example here of a police archetype. You know, that they care about your ship appearance, criminality, smuggling, and piracy reputations. Well, smuggling and piracy reputation systems have never been introduced into the game. They've kind of been kind of subheading -head over, you know, the stats are tracked in the statistics menu, but in terms of there actually being a smuggling or piracy reputation and gameplay developed in the actual game itself right now, it barely exists, and it certainly doesn't exist as any form of reputation. But, you know, the police would care about how sketchy your ship looks 
Criminality, they do care about if you have a wanted status within the, either the superpower or one of the local factions there. And, you know, acts on ship appearance before consulting other elements. Um, then they talk about a dubious trader archetype here. They care about ship appearance, your trading rank, which did make it into the game, smuggling and piracy reputations. Again, piracy and smuggling reputations aren't a thing. This is one of the more interesting takeaways that I've had, that it was clear they planned to implement an event system that was probably closer tied to the background sim and allowing the, the BGS to have a wider impact on the game universe itself than we actually got. Instead, the event system we have today is the community goal system which is all curated and manually done and it looks like that these events were supposed to be popping up to you uh, as well we, we sort of see a shell of this with tip-off missions and some of those things that have popped up but they're fairly inconsequential and not only in terms of how they affect your interaction with the gameplay the NPCs and the factions within the game their rewards are meh I mean, wouldn't it be cool that, let's say, there's a chance of an event occurring of a major outbreak in a system and outside of a community goal? Because there have been community goals that have tried to influence this in the past uh, that basically were just, oh, well, this is just another trade community goal. But let's say that you had joined an organization, and I'll touch on this here in a couple of minutes, that was the... Uh, relief convoy of Dahan and there's a uh, outbreak of I don't know a Celis premium flu and at Chango Dock and your organization has been tasked with delivering medical supplies and food and, and rations and things like that in order to alleviate this event and by doing so it earns you, once you get to a certain rank within that faction, or that minor faction, group, organization, whatever, you get awarded with a special decal, or a special ship skin, uh, something of that nature. If more elements were like that in the gameplay system, I think that you would see a lot less hostility towards the mile-wide, inch-deep claim that is leveled at Elite Dangerous. You would see a much more vibrant game universe in which to inhabit and play within. And here they talk about reputation types. Well, trade, yeah, that did make it in the game. Smuggling is really nowhere to be seen. I think it at one time did tie into your trade rank. Piracy, there's no piracy reputation. I think the people who wanted to actually engage in piracy might actually appreciate if that did actually exist. Uh, mercenary, bounty hunting, and assassination all go under just the generic title of combat. Exploration is its own thing. Espionage... Yeah, there are espionage type missions where it's like go rescue hostages or go, well, I guess kind of go steal this would be a more piracy mission. So those missions do exist in the game, but there's no reputation associated with them. Same thing with prospecting. Miners don't get their own uh, reputation gain. Uh, criminality, of course, and humanitarian. Again, humanitarian. And this is something that they talk about organizations existing entirely in the event system. The closest we have gotten to this would have been power play, or currently is power play. And it does basically nothing that they're really talking about here. Uh, power play as it was implemented, well, I've done entire videos of about that, so I'm not going to go rambling on about it again here. But it's very interesting that it seemed like their ideas and concepts that the event system would be tied to organizations and probably tied to mission generation as well. Maybe this is something that I hopefully, or hopefully we will see fleshed out more in post 2.4, and they'll talk a little bit more about this in October at the Frontier Expo. I don't have super high hopes at this point, but if you want to talk about the one area of the game that desperately needs love and attention, it is implementing the ideas that they have put forth in particular into this section. And then they talk about uh, becoming elite in your ratings and that combat originally was going to be the only ranking, but now in additional to this, it can be with uh, wealth, 
uh, as we call it, trade this day and age influence. Influence, uh, I guess the closest we have there is engineers. But uh, again, there's no way of contracts and successful negotiations or diplomacy. There's no diplomacy in the game. Not really, not that you can really engage in. I guess the closest, again, maybe kind of power play in some stupid way, but not really. Uh, knowledge. Acquisition of data, we call that exploration this day and age. So they're talking about having four ranks. Well, we do have four ranks, but one of them is CQC. I mean, instead of having CQC, wouldn't you much rather have uh, some way of engaging in diplomacy in the game as an expat, uh, as an uh, uh, a way of engaging in the game world as an, a, another mode of gameplay and that diplomacy puzzles and goals uh, helps get your diplomatic rank up which then gives you better access uh, within the superpower ranks or gives you unlocks to different type of mission chains uh, things of that nature I mean there's a lot of things and a lot of directions you could go in just based on the source material here and I know I am, it's a little bit late for me so I am rambling a little bit uh, it says getting the elite rating uh, in any of the four rankings automatically gets you the exclusive elite into the exclusive elite federation of pilots, and being a member of the elite federation confers memory, uh, many privileges, like the founder's world permit. It is also possible for pilots without the elite rating to gain admission into the EFP, but access to an organization is or to the organization is extremely difficult. One must show extraordinary promise as a pilot to be admitted. AKA, it says uh, pilots could, uh, ratings are displayed openly uh, if the pilot selects their rating to be public. Uh, that's not really happening, or has happened. Uh, you, If you scan another player, their rank is shown, so we don't have the option there. Uh, it'll be to be private. Okay, then it's only revealed on a scan. Actually, they just went ahead and it's always just revealed on a scan. So... These values never decrease, that's fine. Uh, you know, it could be Elite Dangerous, Elite Deadly, Elite uh, Rating to get the original Undorned Badge. Um, some of this has changed a little bit. It says different ratings have their own badge color. Uh, I guess that may be kind of true. One's white, one's red, one's blue. But uh, it de doesn't really have a great impact. Uh, ships in Elite Dangerous communicate through text comm messages and audio player to player only, at least initially. Uh, this is starting to change around stations, at least with voiceover, uh, which is good because, oh my god, it was amazing how much breath that that brought into the galaxy. You didn't realize just how stale it really was until they added space traffic control in 2.2 last year. It says, these can be quick messages granting permission to dock or long exchanges debating a mission or deal. Uh, there is no debate on missions or deals, really. Everything is a quick message, either requesting or canceling docking permission. Uh, the only other interaction is on wrinkles, where in passenger missions, people pop up and say, uh, get me five tons of brandy, and you have to say yay or nay. Or if you go to assassinate somebody, maybe the option wrinkle will pop up of, hey, why don't you go kill this other guy that tried to just hire me, or uh, that just hired you to kill me, and I'll pay you more. And you have the option to say yay or nay. That's pretty much all there is in terms of interaction with NPCs in the game world. And again, that's what gives you the mile-wide, inch-deep metaphor there. Because look at what was actually planned when we start talking about uh, Pilots Federation ranking. Uh, okay, this is just talking more about uh, the Federation and all that good stuff. But communication and interaction. Player to player. Players can lock on to and hail other player ships that are not ignoring them. This is actually in the game. Players can also select players from their friends list and open direct communications. That's actually in the game. Players can accept or decline communications. Well, at least for voice comms, we'll say that's in the game. Uh, they have three ways of communicating. They can choose to type messages to each other freely, yes. Two, voice chat, yes. Three, pre-configured mission or messages, no. This does not exist in the game. And it is something that uh, quite a few people have asked for over time, that there needed to be, even if it is the option of just sending somebody else, uh, you know, hitting the comms menu and hitting quick option three. 
of I'm going to boil you up or some other generic thing that the NPCs say or something like that or I am the top 1% of all liners in the galaxy uh, you know, whatever but it says here that uh, these will cover all interactions between the players like uh, asking for assistance, offering trade, and declaring piracy it, we don't get any options, Th this doesn't exist will allow players to carry out deals and agreements quickly and easily by picking presets no can't do that and what what deals or agreements other than agreeing to wing up with somebody that's all that we have it's not like we can trade at least not very easily I mean you can drop cargo for people to pick up new preset options will arise from having a higher reputation value in certain areas and that's talking about with NPC then they go on to talk about player to NPC talking to NPCs would be handled entirely by the preset message system Conversations happen either when the player hails an NPC and they respond, and vice versa, a.k.a. you're hailed by a uh, pirate or a bounty hunter NPC. None of this actually ever made it into the game. Players will choose from a number of options, and the NPC will automatically respond. They will take reputation into account when deciding their response. Reputations can also affect the general tone of interactions with a particular type of NPC, a trader being hostile to a pirate, for example. New conversation options can become available as the player as the reputation values change. Uh, this could include options to bluff, bribe, or haggle. Hey, copper, if you pull me over, I'll send you 100,000 credits to let me go. Oh my gosh! Imagine the game that we could have! You know, all of those, it's only an inch deep. You implemented this type of interaction with the NPC and the greater world at large? Oh my god, most of those complaints about being an inch deep, it's no longer an inch deep. You are well on your way of creating what will seem like a very vibrant and energetic game world in which to inhabit. As opposed to the stale, stagnant economy and political game world that we exist in the game today. Uh, choices made on the interactions will have real consequences for gameplay. Each choice could have a different outcome in terms of gameplay. Lack of a response, usually five seconds, will also be considered a message by the NPC. So if you don't give over your a message of, oh, so you have five seconds to surrender on uh, you know a bounty hunter, if you have a bounty on you somewhere in the galaxy, you know you could say, hey, I will bribe you by paying you the same amount that's price on my head or something, you know, whatever. Players can, uh, visual communication. Players can apply uh, directive visual tags to ships they have targeted uh, that can be seen by other players. These tags can convey the following messages. Attack this ship station. Defend this ship station. Scan this ship. Mm, that would be nice. Basically what they're saying is if I have somebody targeted, I could then send that target information to one of my wingmen and uh, they would then proceed to attack. And I guess with the NPC fighter pilots, this does exist, only in a far more limited. You do have the attack my target option for fighters. You do have defend me, but you can't send your fighter to say defend one of your friends. I know that I've been in fights and stuff before where one ship's getting... Uh, attacked particularly hard or getting primaried, especially in a PvP fight, and it'd be nice to tell my fighter, go protect that ship over there. Let me worry about what I'm going to worry about, uh, but go defend my friend. Uh, same thing with a scan the ship. That would that would be nice to be able to uh, have AI wingmen with, say, kill warrant scanners or cargo scanners or what have you, and have them take on that task, as opposed to maybe you having to necessarily do it or be able to order one of your wingmen to do that very easily without necessarily have to being on voice comms. Abusive language, uh, there would also be an abusive language filter uh, that does exist in the game. So out of what they're talking about here, the only thing that exists is the abusive language filter. Groups. Now, I think that I should probably go ahead and end the video here because this is probably a discussion for an entire video in and of itself. So stay tuned for that one in the near future. Thank you very much for watching. This video is about getting to be 20 minutes long. And, oh my gosh, could you imagine the game? Could you imagine Elite Dangerous 
if they had implemented these features into the game. Wouldn't it be a totally different experience? Wouldn't it be a much d deeper, richer experience with the game world? A lot more fun and exciting? I don't know, maybe it's about exciting. I think it would be a lot more fun and different, entertaining. At any rate, let me know what you think in the comments down below. Until next time, see you then.